At this moment, the final round has arrived, making everyone very excited. So, Mineta tricked the girls in the class into wearing cheerleading outfits, making them very angry, because they are always tricked by Mineta. The final round has 16 students, they will have to fight one-on-one -on -one against each other. So, everyone started drawing lots to choose their matchups. The students were paired up to fight each other. Midoriya realized that his opponent was Shinso. Unexpectedly, Shinso immediately sought out Midoriya to greet him. When Midoriya was about to respond, Ojiro immediately covered his mouth and warned Midoriya not to answer him. While everyone was waiting for the arena to be prepared, Midoriya was very anxious, so All Might sought him out. He realized that Midoriya could use 5% of one for All's power. Thus, he encouraged Midoriya to help him regain his spirit for the match after the arena was prepared. The match began, unexpectedly. The first match was Midoriya's, making him very nervous. While everyone was very excited, Midoriya and Shinso were also ready. Suddenly, Shinso continuously provoked Midoriya, making him angry, accidentally causing him to fall into Shinso's power, he said. I won, making Midoriya's body immobile. Suddenly, he ordered Midoriya to leave the arena. Unexpectedly, Midoriya followed Shinso's command. Surprising everyone, All Might realized, Shinso's ability is brainwashing, making those who answer his questions be brainwashed, and they will follow his orders, making All Might worried, because Midoriya had left the arena, but within his consciousness, Midoriya was still trying to stop, it turned out that Ojiro had warned Midoriya beforehand, about everything regarding Shinso's meta ability, because in the previous match, he had faced Shinso, however, when he was bumped into, he accidentally woke up, so, they thought if they could create a shock to the body, they could escape his meta ability, unexpectedly, Midoriya was still caught by Shinso's brainwashing, making everyone very worried, suddenly, Midoriya saw many silhouettes in the stands, which unconsciously helped him activate one for all, two of Midoriya's fingers could move, as he was about to step out of the arena, Midoriya used one for all on the air, creating a powerful gust of wind, which helped him stop, but, two of Midoriya's fingers were injured, surprising Shinso, because he could break free from his brainwashing, at this moment, Midoriya realized he couldn't answer Shinso's questions, and Midoriya wondered, who are those silhouettes? He recalled All Might's words, one for all is passed from one person to another, so, he realized they were the previous holders of one for all, at this moment, Shinso realized Midoriya knew his secret, thus, he tried to make Midoriya answer his questions, but, Midoriya kept trying not to answer, and ran towards him, to push him out of the arena, unexpectedly, he struck Midoriya's hand, and regained the advantage, but, Midoriya still didn't give up, and he threw Shinso out of the arena, finally, Midoriya won, at this moment, Shinso remembered, when his classmates learned he had the brainwashing ability, it surprised them, because Shinso's ability resembled that of a villain, so, he thought he could never become a hero, Seeing Midoriya's victory, made everyone feel relieved. While Midoriya recalled Shinso's provocations, he said Midoriya was lucky, so, he couldn't understand the unlucky ones like him. Midoriya asked, why do you want to be a hero? Shinso simply replied, it's my dream. Suddenly, Shinso was cheered on by his classmates, which surprised him, because his meta ability had been recognized. At this moment, Shinso declared to Midoriya, I will definitely become a better hero than you. When Midoriya replied, accidentally triggering his ability, so, Shinso reminded Midoriya to be more careful. You must not lose in a shameful way. At this moment, Midoriya had his two fingers treated, making the nurse angry, because All Might put too much pressure on Midoriya. Suddenly, Midoriya told All Might about the nine silhouettes he had seen, surprising All Might. It turns out, when he was young, All Might had also seen them. This proves that Midoriya has better control over one for all. On Shoto's side, he met his father, his father continuously demanded that Shoto use the power of his left arm, and remember his mission to surpass All Might. But, Shoto still firmly refused to use his father's power, at this moment, the next match began. Shoto's opponent was Hanta, making everyone very excited, while Midoriya and Bakugo were focused on watching this match. As the match began, Hanta immediately grabbed Shoto, as he was about to throw him out. Shoto used his ice power causing the entire arena to shake, making everyone surprised, because Shoto created a giant ice block, rendering Hanta unable to move, so, Shoto won overwhelmingly, making everyone surprised, at this moment, Shoto melted the ice for Hanta, Midoriya noticed Shoto seemed sad, then, the next match arrived, 
Abara from class B would fight Denki. Suddenly, Denki felt Abara was very beautiful, so, he decided, after the match, he would ask her out. As the match began, Denki released 1,300,000 volts. Unexpectedly, Abara transformed her hair into vines to block them, and she caught Denki, so, Abara won. It turns out her meta ability is vines. While everyone thought Abara's meta ability was amazing, Denki was experiencing a brain short circuit, because he used too much electricity, suddenly, Ochako saw Midoriya taking notes and analyzing opponents. Hearing him ramble made everyone uncomfortable. So, Ochako talked to him. It turns out this is Midoriya's hobby. And he showed Ochako his analysis of classmates, surprising her. At this moment, the next match began. Lita would fight Hatsume. Unexpectedly, Iida also borrowed Hatsume's support equipment. As the match started, Iida rushed forward, but, Hatsume used a microphone to analyze his equipment, and she manages to dodge Lida. It turns out Hatsume's meta ability is zoom, helping her see objects clearly from 3.11 miles away. Hatsume uses the mic to attract attention from company employees, so, she constantly analyzes her equipment, making everyone feel like she's selling something. While Hatsume keeps analyzing her support equipment, Lida feels she's not serious, making him angry, but, Iida was caught by Hatsume's net, and she continued to introduce her equipment, surprising the support company, after 10 minutes of product introduction, then, Hatsume stepped out of the arena on her own, because she had introduced all her products, so, Iida won, but, it made him very angry, because he felt Hatsume had used him, at this moment, the next match was Yuga versus Mina, while Midoriya was still analyzing their meta abilities, as the match began, Yuga immediately attacked, he used his meta ability, Naval Laser, but, Mina managed to avoid it. It turns out she knew Yuga's weakness. He couldn't shoot Naval Laser for too long. When Yuga weakened, Mina immediately threw acid at his abdomen, causes Yuga's pants to slip down. So, Mina quickly defeated Yuga, and Mina won. At this moment, it was Fumikage's turn to fight Momo. As the match began, Fumikage used his Dark Shadow to attack her, so, Momo immediately created a shield to block. But, Fumikage kept attacking, making her only able to defend, suddenly, Momo was pushed out of the arena, so, Fumikage won, surprising Momo, because she hadn't done anything yet, suddenly, Midoriya noticed Ochako had gone somewhere, but, the next match had begun, Tetsu Tetsu would fight Kirishima, one person has a body as tough as steel, and the other has a body as hard as rock, so, they immediately rushed to attack each other, on Ida's side, he meets Ochako in the waiting room, he realizes Ochako is worried, because her opponent is Bakugo. Suddenly, Midoriya arrives. Midoriya realizes Bakugo won't go easy on Ochako, because her goal is to become number one. So, Midoriya gives Ochako his notebook about Bakugo, but, she refused, because she thinks Midoriya is great. However, she can't always rely on Midoriya. So, Ochako decides to fight on her own, on Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu's side. They're fighting to see who's tougher. Both of them continuously exchange punches with each other. Unexpectedly, they both collapsed at the same time, surprising everyone. So, Midnight decides it's a draw. Finally, it's time for the match between Bakugo and Ochako, making everyone worried about her. At this moment, Ochako confidently steps onto the arena to face Bakugo. Midoriya tells Iida that Bakugo is very strong. He doesn't have any weaknesses, but if Ochako can touch Bakugo's body, making him float, then Ochako can win, as the match begins. Ochako immediately rushes at Bakugo. She immediately predicts Bakugo's movement. When Bakugo attacks, Ochako manages to dodge, surprising everyone. As Bakugo sees Ochako appear, he continues to attack, but, it's just her coat. Ochako then appears behind Bakugo, thinking she will touch him. But, Bakugo pushes her back. As she continues to advance, Bakugo keeps attacking, but, Ochako doesn't give up. Seeing her continuously being attacked by Bakugo, makes everyone worried. They realize Bakugo is too ruthless, because he keeps attacking a girl. But, Aizawa says Bakugo is respecting his opponent, at this moment. He sees Ochako still not giving up. Surprising Bakugo, suddenly, Ochako says, you've let your guard down. It turns out Ochako has been continuously rushing at Bakugo, to break the arena floor. So, Ochako made the pieces of the floor fly into the air and she deactivated her ability, making the pieces of the floor fall down. While Bakugo is focused on blocking the pieces of the floor, now, 
Ochako immediately rushes up, because she always wants to be like Midoriya, but, Bakugo creates a powerful explosion. He immediately sends Ochako flying, and destroys all of her rock fragments, surprising everyone, because in fights with Midoriya, Bakugo has been more careful, but, Ochako still doesn't give up, just like Midoriya, suddenly, Ochako collapses, because her body is exhausted, unable to move anymore, but, Ochako continues to crawl forward, because she wants to earn money to help her parents, surprising Bakugo, finally, Ochako faints, so, Bakugo wins, at this point, the first round has ended, Midoriya remembers Ochako's determination, making him very worried, suddenly, he encounters Bakugo, making him afraid, suddenly, Bakugo asks, that plan is yours, isn't it? But, Midoriya says, that entire plan belongs to Ochako, at this point, everyone teases Bakugo as a villain, because he fought a weak girl, but, Bakugo feels Ochako is not weak, while Ochako is still trying to act normal with Midoriya, she says she's fine, making Midoriya even more worried, at this point, Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu have arm wrestled, to see who will advance to the next round, in the end, Kirishima wins, but, he greatly respects Tetsu Tetsu, earning admiration from everyone, as Midoriya leaves to prepare for the next match, he calls his father, although Ochako feels numb from her loss, her father sees Ochako's match as amazing, and they are very proud of her, at this moment, Midoriya realizes Ochako is very desperate, but, she still cheers him on, helping Midoriya feel more confident, suddenly, he sees Endeavor, surprising Midoriya, he recognizes Midoriya's power resembling All Might's, he says, I want Shoto to surpass All Might, so, a match with you is the best test for Shoto, but, Midoriya says, I'm not All Might, and Shoto is not you either, at this point, the next match has begun, so, Shoto and Midoriya step onto the arena, making everyone very excited, while Tamura is still watching Midoriya on TV. People are also eagerly awaiting Midoriya and Shoto's match, at this point, Shoto is determined to get first place, but without using Endeavor's power. While Midoriya cannot afford to lose, because of his promise to All Might, as the match begins, so, Shoto used ice to attack Midoriya, but, he used one for all flick off into the air creating a strong wind that destroyed Shoto's ice, however, Shoto realizes, his meta ability will harm himself, All Might realizes Midoriya is using 100% of his power, Shoto continues to attack, so, he continues to flick off into the air, to push Shoto back, but, Midoriya's two fingers are injured, he realizes he needs to break the ice behind Shoto, so, Midoriya starts thinking, because he only has six more attacks left, Shoto continues to attack Midoriya, making Midoriya flick off for the third time. While everyone is still focused on the match, Shoto continues to attack, forcing him to keep blocking, so, all the fingers on Midoriya's right hand are injured. Taking this opportunity, Shoto rushes in, Midoriya immediately attacks him, but, Shoto manages to dodge, and he freezes Midoriya's legs. He realizes the opportunity has come, so, Midoriya immediately uses one for all on his left arm, and he delivers a powerful blow sending shockwaves throughout the stadium, but, Shoto still stands firm inside the arena, while Midoriya's left arm is injured, Shoto realizes Midoriya intentionally brought him closer, Midoriya also realizes, Shoto's prediction and technique are too good, suddenly, Midoriya realizes, Shoto hasn't used all his power yet, because he only used his ice power, without using Endeavor's firepower, when Shoto is about to end the battle, thinking Midoriya can't fight anymore, suddenly, he attacks Shoto, surprising everyone, because Shoto is about to be pushed out of the arena, Shoto realizes he continues to use his broken fingers to attack, at this moment, Midoriya knows, Shoto's ability also has its limits, because his right side is frozen, so, Midoriya says, use your full power to fight me, making Shoto angry, so, he rushes to attack Midoriya, seizing this opportunity, Midoriya immediately unleashes 100% of one for all into his arm, and he tries not to let the power explode, then, he punches Shoto back, making Shoto wonder why he stopped, so, Shoto continues to attack Midoriya, the heroes realize Midoriya is fighting recklessly, because currently, he doesn't feel any pain, but, Midoriya still doesn't give up, because he wants to show All Might his determination, suddenly, Midoriya uses his mouth, to wield the power of his thumb, and he pushed Shoto back, at this moment, Midoriya said, he wants to become a hero, to be able to smile in response to everyone's expectations, prompting Shoto to recall his past, turns out, 
when he was little, Shoto was always forced to train by his father, so, his mother intervened with endeavor, but, she was also struck by him, leaving Shoto resentful towards his father, and he wanted to become a hero just like him, but, one day he realized his mother hated him, because his left side resembled endeavors, and she had hurt Shoto, so, she was hospitalized by his father, at this point, Midoriya continued to control one for all and punched Shoto away, and he says, this strength belongs to you, doesn't it? So, Shoto remembered the time he watched All Might with his mother, and helped him recall his own hero's purpose, thus, Shoto unleashed a massive blaze, surprising everyone, and he decided to use all his strength to fight Midoriya, making Endeavor very pleased, because he thought Shoto had accepted his power, so, he immediately combined his ice and fire powers, therefore, Midoriya also infused 100% of one for all into his legs, and rushed towards Shoto at incredible speed. Both of them then used all their strength to fight each other, causing the entire arena to shatter. Everyone was astonished, because their powers were so terrifying, while everyone was waiting to see who would win. They realized Midoriya had flown out of the arena, so, Shoto was declared the winner, at this moment. Endeavor was very pleased, because he thought Shoto had accepted his power, but, Shoto still resented him deeply, in fact, he didn't even care about Endeavor, because Shoto realized this power was his own. Midoriya was currently in the medical room. She felt that All Might had placed too much pressure on Midoriya, which had resulted in him being seriously injured. Suddenly, Ochako's group came to visit Midoriya, surprising everyone, because Midoriya's match was so amazing. But, they were promptly kicked out by the doctor for being too noisy. At this point, Midoriya apologized to All Might, because he couldn't keep his promise to him. If Midoriya hadn't helped Shoto overcome his past, then, he would have won. But, Midoriya didn't want to see Shoto sad, so, All Might said, the things Midoriya did were the qualities of a hero, on the arena side. Iida had defeated Ibarra, by pushing her out at incredible speed, then, it was Fumikage's turn to defeat Mina, at this point, the doctor had finished treating Midoriya, but, his hand was scarred, and she advised All Might to find another way for Midoriya to use one for all, because he couldn't continue to harm himself anymore. As they left the medical room, Midoriya realized there were many other students better than him, so, Midoriya wanted All Might to choose someone more suitable to inherit one for all. Suddenly, All Might revealed to him, I was also quirkless, surprising Midoriya. Turns out, All Might didn't have any meta ability either, but, he still inherited one for all from his master, so, he trusted in choosing Midoriya, because there were some things only Midoriya could do. On Ida's brother's side, he's chasing a dangerous villain, and he's found him, turns out, He's the hero killer, at this time, Bakugo is fighting Kirishima, making Bakugo feel challenged, because Kirishima's body is very hard, despite this, Bakugo continues to attack relentlessly, in the end, he emerges victorious, seeing Midoriya is now well, making everyone very happy, turns out, he wants to watch the match between Iida and Shoto, even though Iida moves very fast, he's still caught by Shoto's ice encirclement, unexpectedly, Iida leaps up, to avoid the attack and kicks Shoto in the head, causing Shoto to fall, seizing this opportunity. Iida plans to throw Shoto out, but, his engine gets frozen, so, Shoto freezes Iida's entire body, and Shoto emerges as the victor, on Iida's brother's side, he's been defeated, because the hero killer's goal is to kill all heroes, and he only recognizes All Might as a hero. Meanwhile, Bakugo is fighting Fumikage, but, he's being overwhelmed by Bakugo, Ochako realizes that Bakugo's fire is Fumikage's weakness. He realizes he's at a disadvantage, so, Fumikage tries to attack Bakugo. But, Bakugo manages to dodge, and he creates a powerful explosion. Turns out, Bakugo has also discovered Fumikage's weakness, so, Bakugo emerges victorious. Finally, it's only Bakugo and Shoto left to fight, making everyone curious. They don't know who will win. Suddenly, Iida receives a phone call from his mother. She informs him that his brother is critically injured in the hospital. On Stain's side, he's nicknamed the hero killer, and he believes all heroes are hypocrites, so, he wants to eradicate all heroes. Suddenly, Kurogiri appears behind Stain, but, he's immediately detected by Stain, turns out. The League of Villains wants to collaborate with him. At this time, Shoto is in the waiting room contemplating. He never wants to use his fire meta ability, because his mother despises it, but, he was forced by Midoriya to use it, suddenly, Bakugo bursts in through the door, turns out, he went to the wrong room, leaving Bakugo confused, but, he's very annoyed with Shoto, 
because Shodo seems to be ignoring him, making Bakugo furious. But, Shodo asks Bakugo, you're Midoriya's childhood friend, aren't you? He always risks himself for others like that, doesn't he? So, Bakugo remembers Midoriya. He always tries to help Bakugo, even though Bakugo doesn't need those things, making him very angry, and tells Shodo to use all his strength against him. At this point, Bakugo is determined to defeat Shodo, to secure the top spot. Finally, the match between Bakugo and Shodo begins, making everyone very excited. As soon as the match starts, Shodo immediately freezes the entire arena, forcing Bakugo to constantly block it, when everyone thought Bakugo was losing. But, Bakugo breaks through Shodo's ice. So, Bakugo immediately charges at him. When Shodo tries to grab Bakugo, he dodges to the right, and immediately grabs Shodo, surprising everyone. Then, Bakugo throws Shodo away. But, Shodo creates an ice path, to come back and attack Bakugo, making Endeavor excited, because he wants Shodo to use his power. But, Shodo only throws Bakugo away making Bakugo furious, because Shoto didn't use all his strength against him. So, Bakugo declares to Shoto, if you dare to underestimate me, you'll lose, because I will definitely take the first place. A loser like you should just disappear. So, he charges at Shoto, while Shoto is still conflicted about his hero's purpose. Suddenly, Midoriya cheers for Shoto. He immediately helps Shoto regain his confidence, and he releases the fire from his left side, making Bakugo excited and he unleashes his strongest move, creating a massive explosion. As everyone is waiting to see who the winner is, Bakugo realizes, Shoto has extinguished his own fire. So, Shoto is thrown out of the arena, making Bakugo very angry, because his victory doesn't mean anything anymore. Suddenly, Midnight releases a fragrance, making Bakugo faint, and she declares, the winner is Bakugo, making everyone very happy. Finally, it's the award ceremony, making everyone surprised because Bakugo has been restrained, even though he won first place, turns out, Bakugo is still very angry with Shoto, but, Midoriya is worried about Iida, because earlier, Iida told Midoriya about his brother, so, Iida immediately goes to the hospital, because Iida's brother is the ideal role model that Iida always follows, suddenly, All Might appears, making everyone very happy, he then presents the medals and praises the winners, at this moment, Shoto tells All Might, he knows what he has to do next. So, All Might trusts that Shoto will succeed. Finally, it's Bakugo's turn. When All Might removes his gag, Bakugo immediately gets angry and scolds him. Bakugo even refuses to accept the medal. Finally, the sports festival comes to an end. At this point, Aizawa announces to Midoriya's class, they will have some time off, but, Midoriya is worried about Iida. On Iida's side, he's already at the hospital, seeing his brother critically injured. Lida is shocked. The next morning, Shoto tells his sister, he will visit their mother in the hospital, surprising his sister, because Shoto hasn't been there in a long time. Turns out, Shoto has always thought, his existence is a burden to his mother, because his mother is always oppressed by Endeavor. At this point, Shoto enters the hospital room to see his mother. This time, he is determined to help his mother escape from that oppression. At this moment, Ochako has just returned home. Her parents immediately come out to congratulate her, because Ochako has surpassed the sports festival, making her very happy. Meanwhile, Midoriya has been struggling to eat, because he still hasn't fully recovered. Although Midoriya's mother was once very happy, because Midoriya has a meta ability, but, she finds this meta ability of his too dangerous. At this moment, Midoriya realizes everyone has high expectations of him, so, he has to find a way to control one for all. On Bakugo's side, He's still very angry. After the holiday ends, Midoriya starts returning to the academy. Unexpectedly, everyone on the subway recognizes him, because Midoriya also stood out in the sports festival, making Midoriya surprised. Suddenly, Midoriya meets Iida. He's also eagerly returned to the academy. When Midoriya is about to ask about his brother, Iida acts very normal, and tells Midoriya not to worry. At this moment, Midoriya's class 1A is very excited, because they have all become famous. Suddenly, Aizawa enters the class, they notice Aizawa's wound has healed. He announces that it's time for them to come up with their own hero names, making everyone excited, because these hero names will be updated in the list of professional heroes. While Bakugo and Shoto are chosen by many professional heroes, Midoriya isn't chosen by anyone, because his fighting style is too reckless. At this point, Aizawa says they need to gain more real-life experience, similar to when they encountered the League of Villains before. Suddenly, Midnight appears, 
making the boys in the class excited, because she's very beautiful, turns out. Midnight will help them come up with suitable hero names, so, they start brainstorming and writing down their ideas. First is Yuga. His hero name is, I can not stop twinkling, but, Midnight finds it too long, so, she changes it to, can't stop twinkling, next, Mina's hero name is, Alien Queen, but, Midnight finds it too scary, then, it's Suyu's turn, her hero name is, Rainy Season Hero, Froppy, making Midnight and everyone else really like it, then, the other students take turns naming themselves, while Midoriya is still thinking about his own hero name, and he remembers talking about this with his mother when he was little, but, because he's a huge fan of All Might, his hero name is always similar to All Might's, while others have thought of very fitting hero names for themselves, but, Shoto has taken his own name as his nickname, Bakugo names himself, Great Explosion Murder God, then, it's Ochako's turn, she names herself, Gravity, making Midnight amused, now, only Iida and Midoriya are left, while Iida is reminiscing about his brother, it turns out his current condition prevents him from being a hero anymore, which saddens Iida deeply, his brother wants Iida to continue being a hero using his name, but, Iida hasn't accepted this yet, so, he decides to use his own name as his hero name, finally, it's Midoriya's turn, unexpectedly, his chosen hero name surprises everyone, turns out, the hero name he chooses is, Deku, which means, useless person, but, it still has another meaning, one who can do it, All Might discovers that a hero has nominated Midoriya, which surprises him, after they have finished choosing their hero names, Aizawa says those who receive nominations will go to workplace training, those without nominations will choose their own workplace training, to gain more real life experience, while everyone is thinking about which workplace training to choose, Ochako chooses the hero Gunhead, because she realizes she needs to improve her combat skills, suddenly, they notice Midoriya trembling, turns out he's practicing sitting on an air chair, surprising them, after school, All Might immediately looks for Midoriya, he announces that Midoriya has received a nomination from Gran Torino, who is All Might's former teacher, this excites Midoriya, and Gran Torino also knows about the one for all ability, even though he's retired, All Might still trembles when mentioning him, Midoriya starts to worry, and now he knows about Ida's brother's condition, the one who harmed him was Stain, the next day, they are ready to go to their workplaces, Midoriya and Ochako go to meet Ida to encourage him, but, Ida is determined to seek revenge, meanwhile, Midoriya is heading to Gran Torino's address, as he opens the door and steps inside, Midoriya sees blood, but, Gran Torino is still alive, turns out, he's just teasing Midoriya, seeing this old man behaving so erratically, makes Midoriya skeptical, is he really All Might's former teacher? Suddenly, he becomes serious and asks, how much control do you have over one for all? Then, he swiftly jumps with incredible speed, surprising Midoriya, because he's not erratic at all. Gran Torino reveals he's been observing Midoriya since the sports festival, learning that he dared to use one for all, despite his injuries, Gran Torino also blames All Might for not knowing how to teach Midoriya, he instructs Midoriya to put on his hero costume, which makes him delighted, turns out, Midoriya's hero costume has been upgraded, Gran Torino tells Midoriya to attack him, but, Midoriya is afraid he'll ruin this place, so, Gran Torino strikes first, moving with incredible speed, making Midoriya unable to keep up, and he keeps attacking Midoriya continuously, but, Midoriya is still trying to analyze his movements, he imagines using one for all like cooking eggs, then, he saw Gran Torino, and Midoriya immediately attacks him, but, Midoriya moves too slowly, so, he is immediately caught by Gran Torino, surprising Midoriya, he says that Midoriya was too hasty, yet, he doesn't know how to control one for all, he hasn't even learned anything about it, so, now Midoriya has to quickly learn how to control one for all, but, he has to figure it out on his own, before Gran Torino goes out to eat, on the other hand, Iida has chosen where his brother used to work, because his goal is to find Stain, on the side of the League of Villains, they are meeting Stain, Tamura wants to invite him to join the League of Villains, so, they can easily kill All Might, and he showed Stain a picture of Midoriya, but, Stain refused, because Stain always sees All Might as a hero, so, he immediately drew his weapon, Midoriya is trying to control one for all, and he remembered his battles, suddenly, Midoriya realized something he had never noticed before, that is, seeing one for all like his own body, while Gran Torino is still outside observing Midoriya, Bakugo, on the other hand, has arrived at the location of hero number 4, 
Tsunagu. Although Tsunagu sent a recommendation letter for Bakugo, he doesn't like Bakugo, which surprises him. Turns out Tsunagu is only impressed with his meta ability, making Bakugo furious. But Tsunagu immediately tied up Bakugo. Turns out Tsunagu wants to teach Bakugo to become an exemplary hero, and he won't lose his temper anymore. On Kirishima's side, he has met Tetsu Tetsu. Turns out both of them have been nominated for the same job, making them very happy. On Ochako and the other classmates' side, they have all found suitable jobs for themselves. Unexpectedly, Shoto chose to work at his father's place, making him very happy, while Gran Torino is sleeping soundly. Midoriya is still thinking of ways to control one for all. He realizes Bakugo easily controls his meta ability, so, Midoriya starts training as well. Currently, he has mastered 5%. Thus, Midoriya decides to jump over this wall. As he puts force into his legs and jumps, he immediately crashes into the wall. Midoriya realizes he has to put force into both his legs and arms. So, Midoriya tries again. But, he keeps failing continuously. The next morning when Gran Torino wakes up, he sees Midoriya looking very exhausted. He realizes Midoriya needs to be trained differently from All Might. Turns out before All Might was hit by him many times, suddenly, Gran Torino puts a microwave oven, so, he immediately tells Midoriya to bake a cake, while Midoriya still continues to think about controlling one for all. When Gran Torino tries a piece of cake, he finds it very hard, so, he blames Midoriya for not using a rotating plate in the oven. Suddenly, he realizes a way to control one for all, because he has always used one for all on a specific part of his body. Now, Midoriya tries using one for all on his entire body. Gran Torino realizes Midoriya did it right, so, Midoriya has unlocked 5% of one for all. Thus, Gran Torino decides to spar with him. Within 3 minutes, Midoriya has to catch him, so, Gran Torino moves very quickly, and kicks Midoriya in the face, making Midoriya unable to keep up with his speed. He realizes he doesn't have time to use one for all, so, Midoriya promptly ducked down into his seat. When Gran Torino rushes down to attack, Midoriya instantly uses one for all, and he jumped up to catch Gran Torino, but, he dodged, and he kicked Midoriya into the wall. The three minute time limit was up, Midoriya realizes it's difficult to maintain one for all, but, Gran Torino sees that Midoriya has improved. When Gran Torino is about to return for breakfast, he sees the cake has fallen to the ground, so, he tells Midoriya to go buy a new one, and Midoriya decides to call this new technique one for all, full cowl, while Ochako is still practicing combat skills. Bakugo has his hair cut very neatly by Tsunagu, making him very uncomfortable. At this time, Tsukachi is informing All Might. They have tested the DNA of Nomu, and they found out he used to be a thug, but inside him still contains many DNA of others. So, Nomu can possess multiple meta abilities, and he deduced that Nomu was created by that dangerous individual, which surprises All Might because he realized that the dangerous individual had returned. On Stain's side, he has captured Tamura, causing him pain. Even he and Kurogiri couldn't move. Suddenly, Tamura decay his sword. And he says his purpose is to destroy this world. Surprising Stain, Stain realizes he is a lunatic. At this point, Stain requests they take him back to the old place, because he still has a few things to do there. On Ida's side, he is still investigating news about Stain, because he knows he will appear in this city again. While Midoriya is still training with Gran Torino, but, Midoriya still hasn't caught him. Suddenly, Gran Torino mentions moving on to phase 2, turns out he wants Midoriya to go catch villains, because it will help him gain real combat experience, so, he immediately takes Midoriya to a city with many villains. Meanwhile, Iida is still trying to patrol with his brother's friend, he realizes Iida is looking for the hero killer, so, he tries to advise Iida. Iida still can't forget his vendetta. At this point, Tamura continues to search for Stain. He says he will reform this city, because he believes the title of hero should only be given to the great. Now, there are too many money-hungry heroes, so, he wants to eliminate all heroes, making Tamura feel very excited. Thus, he tells Kurogiri to release the Nomu gang. Unexpectedly, three Nomu appear. At this moment, Midoriya is on a train with Gran Torino, then, their train is attacked by a Nomu. So, Gran Torino immediately punches him in the face, and he takes him outside. Midoriya realizes the city is under attack. Turns out Tamura is having the Nomu gang destroy the city, to attract as many heroes as possible. When Iida intends to go for assistance, he discovers Stain. While Stain is planning to kill this hero, 
So, he is immediately attacked by Ida. But, Ida is knocked down by him. Stain sees the look in Ida's eyes, and he realizes he's here for revenge. At this moment, Ida asks, do you still remember Ingenium? On Midoriya's side, he's running to assist the heroes. He realizes the Nomu are very powerful, so, he immediately uses one for all, to run there as fast as possible. While the Nomu gang is still attacking the city, causing everyone to be frightened, so, Gran Torino immediately intervenes. Suddenly, Nomu is engulfed in flames, surprising Gran Torino. Turns out Endeavor has arrived. At this moment, Midoriya sees the city in chaos. Suddenly, he sees two Nomu appearing, causing a bus to catch fire. So, the heroes work together to stop the Nomu and extinguish the fire. Midoriya realizes Ieda is looking for the hero killer here. Thus, he immediately runs to find Ieda. While Stain doesn't ask who Ingenium is, Lita says, Ingenium is the one who will defeat you. So, he attacks Stain, however, Stain manages to dodge, he then strikes him down, and stabs his sword into Ida's shoulder. He even humiliates Ida's two brothers. At this point, Ida tells him it's because of him, that his brother couldn't become a hero anymore. He has always been Ida's pride, which makes Ida extremely angry. He is determined to kill Stain, but, Stain tells Ida to save this professional hero first, because heroes must always use their strength for others, not for themselves. Suddenly, Stain tastes Ida's blood, which immediately paralyzes him. As Stain is about to kill him, Midoriya suddenly appears and punches Stain in the face, which surprises Ida. Stain recognizes having seen him in Tamura's photo. At this moment, Ida's body still can't move. Suddenly, he sees there's another hero here, so, he can't carry Ida away. Stain says he will kill Ida. When Midoriya looks into Stain's eyes, it makes him scared, because his eyes are those of a murderer. So, Midoriya immediately sends out a distress signal. At this point, Ieda tells Midoriya to run away, but, if he runs away, he won't deserve to be a hero anymore. So, Midoriya rushes at Stain. Unexpectedly, he manages to dodge his attacks, and punches Stain hard to the ground. Lita realizes he mimicked Bakugo's movements. Suddenly, Stain tastes blood on his sword, making Midoriya unable to move. Turns out Midoriya has been hit by Stain's blade. He realizes that Stain's power is activated by blood. When Stain is about to finish off Ieda, he is suddenly attacked. It turns out Shoto has come to save them, because he received Midoriya's emergency distress signal. Midoriya sees him using fire, so, he immediately attacks Stain. At this moment, Midoriya tells Shoto, he must not let Stain touch his blood, or else he won't be able to move. Suddenly, Stain throws a knife at Shoto. He continues to attack him, but, Shoto uses ice to block. When he is about to take Shoto's blood, he uses fire to push him back, while Ida is feeling helpless because he wants to personally avenge his brother. At this moment, Shoto says Ingenium that he knows is different from the current Ieda. Suddenly, Midoriya starts to move again. Unexpectedly, Stain is too strong. He immediately overwhelms Shoto. Luckily, Midoriya manages to stop him. Stain realizes that Midoriya's blood is type O. At this moment, Midoriya figures out that Stain's meta ability depends on blood type. Turns out Stain's meta ability is blood curdle and the clotting time varies depending on the blood type. At this point, they need a strategy to defeat him. Midoriya decides to attract his attention. Lita notices Shoto has changed. He is no longer consumed by hatred. When Shoto arrived at the hospital, his mother apologized and no longer resented him. So, Shoto chose to work at his father's agency. Meanwhile, Midoriya moved quickly to attract Stain's attention, seeing Shoto and Midoriya fighting. Lita feels like a burden, when Midoriya is in danger. Luckily, Shoto manages to stop Stain, Shoto tells Ieda to stand up and fight. He sees his friend in danger, making him rethink his purpose as a hero, and he remembers, his brother always wanted to be a great hero. At this moment, Stain is approaching Shoto, when he is in danger. Lita immediately stands up, he rushes to block Stain's attack with incredible speed, making him step back. Lita decides to fight him because he doesn't want his friends to fight for him anymore, causing Stain to become enraged. Shoto immediately uses fire to stop him, but, Stain manages to dodge, and he continues to attack them. Shoto realizes he can't afford to be hit by his blood curdle ability. Before the pro hero arrives, they must try to resist Stain. Suddenly, Ieda blocks Stain's attack for Shoto. Fortunately, Midoriya was able to move. He immediately uses one for all, while Ieda is also utilizing his engine at full power. 
Both of them rush towards Stain at incredible speed, and they punch him together. Meanwhile, Gran Torino is fighting Nomu. Endeavor appears to assist him, unexpectedly. Nomu absorbs and releases Endeavor's flames, even increasing in strength and leaping up. So, Endeavor and Gran Torino cooperate to fight against Nomu. Thus, they defeated him. At this moment, Endeavor decided to go to Shoto's location, while Midoriya and Iida landed punches on Stain. When Shoto was about to defeat him, Stain immediately counterattacked them, but he still got hit by Iida's and Shoto's attacks. Finally, they emerged victorious over Stain. Meanwhile, other heroes were battling Nomu. Fortunately, Endeavor appeared and pushed him back with a punch, swiftly defeating him. But, there was still one Nomu trying to escape. Endeavor immediately chased after him, however, he let him get away. Midoriya's group managed to restrain Stain, but, Midoriya himself was exhausted. At this moment, Gran Torino arrived as well. He immediately scolded Midoriya for acting recklessly. Suddenly, other heroes also arrive. Upon seeing Midoriya's group had captured Stain, they were all surprised. At that moment, Lita apologized to Midoriya and Shoto, feeling responsible for their injuries, but, Midoriya said, we're friends. Suddenly, a Nomu charged at them, and he grabbed Midoriya, taking everyone by surprise. However, Stain managed to taste his blood, causing the Nomu to freeze in place and fall. Unexpectedly, Stain freed himself and dealt with the Nomu, revealing that his goal was to eliminate all villains, to create a better world. It surprised everyone, while Tamura was getting angry, because all his Nomu had been defeated. As the heroes thought Stain had taken Midoriya hostage, Endeavor arrived. He was about to attack Stain, but, Gran Torino held him back, at that moment, they saw Stain's face, instilling fear in them, sensing his terrifying aura, he immediately challenged all the heroes present, I only allow all might to capture me, instilling fear in everyone, suddenly, Stain lost consciousness, Endeavor realized he was unconscious, so, everyone felt relieved, at that moment, the cameramen were recording the city after the attack, suddenly, they saw two figures watching from afar, Tamura was furious, because his three Nomu had been defeated, he decided to leave. The next morning, Midoriya's group was at the hospital. Midoriya realized their survival was a miracle. At that moment, Gran Torino came to visit them. Suddenly, the city's police chief also arrived, surprising Midoriya. He said that Stain was severely injured, and was being treated under police supervision. The police chief stated that Midoriya's group had violated the city's laws, because they hadn't been licensed to use their meta abilities to injure others, even if the person was a villain, as they were still students and not official heroes yet, so, they would be penalized. This angered Shoto, as the mission of a hero is to save people, but, he also didn't want Midoriya's group to be punished, so, if they agreed not to publicize this incident, they wouldn't need to be penalized. At this point Lita, Midoriya, and Shoto also apologized for their recklessness. Suddenly, the police chief also apologized to them, as he had deprived them of the recognition they deserved from everyone. Finally, Stain was apprehended and it was announced to the press, with Endeavor being credited for his capture. But, many other villains were watching this news closely, while Tamura was furious, as his plan to make everyone aware of his League of Villains had failed. Meanwhile, Bakugo was still learning to keep calm, which was making him very uncomfortable. At this moment, Ochako felt relieved, knowing that Midoriya and Lita were still okay. Midoriya felt shy, as this was the first time he had talked to a girl over the phone. At this moment, Gran Torino called All Might, and he scolded All Might, for Midoriya's recklessness had cost him half of his retirement fund. Even his personality resembled All Might's when he was young. But, Gran Torino felt that Stain was connected to the League of Villains, because after this incident, the League of Villains would only grow larger, and the boss of them is the one who killed All Might's mentor, the successor of one for all in the previous generation and the one who caused the scar on All Might's abdomen is none other than All for One. On the side of the villains, a video about Stain is being circulated. It turns out that Stain used to idolize All Might greatly. He even wanted to become a hero himself, but no one accepted his ideal of heroism, because he believed that heroes should always sacrifice themselves for others. So, he decided to become a villain, to eradicate those he deemed unworthy of being heroes. After the video about Stain was spread, so, many villains have embraced his ideals, and they begin to gravitate towards the League of Villains. At this time, Midoriya alone remains hospitalized, as his injuries have yet to fully heal. On Bakugo's side, Tsunagu is taking him on patrol. Surprisingly, he's quite popular with the people, while Bakugo is being bad-mouthed by the kids. 
which infuriates him. Tsunagu doesn't know how to change Bakugo's demeanor. While Ochako continues her combat training, Momo finds herself tasked with photography duty, Kirishima and Tetsu Tetsu are on garbage collection duty. Meanwhile, Suyu is working aboard the Oki Mariner cruise ship, with their captain being the hero Selkie. Suddenly, they receive an urgent mission, prompting them to set sail out to sea. It turns out the Coast Guard team has spotted smugglers, and their mission is to apprehend these smugglers. Selkie dives into the ocean, revealing his spotted seal meta ability. As Selkie swiftly swims, Suyu grows increasingly concerned. Selkie has returned promptly, because Selkie has indeed discovered the smuggler's ship. He assigns tasks to everyone, but Suyu is excluded from the mission, due to the danger of facing the smugglers head on. Approaching the smuggler's ship, they allow Selkie to inspect their vessel easily, yet no contraband is found. When Selkie wanted to check the fish storage compartment, they were pushed down below by them. Turns out these two are the smugglers. At this time, Sirius on the ship couldn't contact Selkie, so she immediately used her meta ability, Good Ear, allowing her to hear sounds at the lowest frequency, and she heard Selkie's signal. He told them to chase after the smugglers, although Suyu was worried about Selkie, but Sirius said they had to listen to the captain, so they chased after the smugglers. At this time, she saw them, thus, they attacked together, they quickly apprehend one of them. When they boarded the ship, they were attacked by a villain, so, Sirius was captured by him. When Suyu tried to rescue her, he used Sirius to threaten her. Suddenly, he realized they were communicating with each other, so, he told Suyu to say that the criminals had escaped, to mislead Selkie's direction, but, Suyu remembered Sirius's words. No matter what, they had to obey the captain's orders, so, she immediately reported that the villain was here, making him angry and attacking Suyu. But, Suyu managed to dodge, unexpectedly, she was grabbed by him by the tongue and captured. When he was about to finish Suyu, Selkie immediately appeared. So, the villain immediately attacked Selkie, but, he fought back and defeated him. Finally, they completed the mission. By now, Suyu had a better understanding of her duty as a hero. The next morning, the villains were handed over to the police, which made Suyu very happy, because she had completed her training course. The video ends here for today. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel to support Oni Chan in releasing more videos soon. Thank you for watching. Love you all.